Okay, I don't know how I don't talk about this. The new American food pyramid. It's kind of fucking hilarious. It's upside down. What? Sir, the pyramid is upside down. Turn the pyramid upside down. Sir, we've got a match. They did, in fact, try to flip the old pyramid on its head. Previously, the old pyramid had a real concentration of breads and then meats higher up, whereas now meats seem to be a priority with fruits and vegetables and grains are on the bottom tier. Now, people are celebrating this, like, let's get rid of that old one. We got a good new one, right? Well, it's actually already old. They replaced it 15 years ago. They were using the my plate method that's also used in Canada, where they give you a rough distribution on how you should set up your plate. I like this approach because it's way more user friendly and a clear picture for people to plan meals. And people love to blame the food guide when they tend to forget no one fucking listens to it because they're eating shitty food all day eating out. Now I'm actually thrilled with one little part here and it is the focus on protein. They finally enhanced the recommendation to 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is exactly what I recommend to my clients if you're trying to be healthy and if you care about your muscle tissue. However, the problem lies within the protein types. These types of protein are very high saturated fat. And RFK actually stated, do not be afraid of things with high saturated fat. Now the previous recommendations were to caution saturated fat and to keep it around a limit of 10% of your total calories. Now here's the funny part. Do you want to hear what the recommendation they have is now? Keep it under 10%. <laughs> now luckily in Canada, we still have the my plate method, which again is very useful because you can see how to fill up a plate. I'm going to compliment and be critical of the protein section. In the American version, they really isolate more animal-based protein, which is very biased, and they should actually point out that some people can have plant-based protein. That's fine. However, it's really important for people to recognize just because a plant has protein in it doesn't make it an effective high-protein source. Now, I understand tofu and lentils, but I do not think you should be putting almonds and peanuts in the same section as chicken or salmon. And our recommendations have not caught up to the total quantity recommendation that would probably help most people. So this is still a useful tool for most people because it does actually really encourage a lot of fruits and vegetables and a modest amount of whole grain carbs. But I do recommend that you take your own responsibility to have more than enough protein compared to the recommendations. And if you don't want to track, just try using the palm method. Try to have one to 1.5 palms per meal. And yes, I know it's a lot, but guess what? You get to be fuller. And in the meantime, we'll watch and see how healthier the United States comes because of this.